that have been interpreted as gods. But were these gods mere folklore? Or could they have been actual creatures visiting our planet and sharing their secrets with mankind? If the ancient Egyptians had had contact with extraterrestrials, maybe all of the hieroglyphs that we see today of their gods are actually their interactions with extraterrestrials. Abydos, Egypt, carved into the walls of the famed Temple of Seti, are incredible images that some believe could connect ancient man and alien life. On the walls of these Egyptian edifices, there seem to be hieroglyphic depictions of an unmanned aircraft. There's a helicopter. Another type of aircraft. It looks like there's a submarine. What could explain that? The inscriptions that were carved into stone 8,000 years ago. If these are recordings of machines a millennia before their time, could ancient man have been exposed to advanced technology by a superior race? You have to wonder, were these flying machines in the sky during ancient Egyptian times? Is this something that they built themselves? Or this could be proof that something was in our skies thousands of years ago. If these carvings are evidence of alien contact with ancient humans, what were they here to accomplish? The answer could be, in the tomb of an Egyptian ruler, some believe may not have been human at all. Unsealed case file, Akhenaten, the alien king. Pharaoh Abenhotep IV became ruler of Egypt in 1353 BC. But five years into his reign, he changed his name to Akhenaten, the living spirit of Aten. In Egyptian mythology, Aten is described as this solar disk, sometimes depicted with hands and rays coming out of it. And this makes Akhenaten the living embodiment of that sun disk. Akhenaten ruled for 17 years, changing the traditional religion of the land to only worship Aten. According to the king, Aten, the sun disk, was more powerful than mere gods. Because Akhenaten was able to come in and change all of the beliefs of Egypt in a matter of just years, that tells me that there's some connection between him and this deity. And if we believe in the idea that Aten was some sort of extraterrestrial being, then perhaps Akhenaten was actually offspring. Hieroglyphics of Akhenaten reveal him to be anything but normal. His arms and fingers are long and slender. His chin stretches low and his head strangely elongated. Certain characteristics of these aliens would be portrayed in the genetic structure of the royal family. And one of those is cranial elongation. Analysis of Akhenaten's skull has led researchers to imagine a head of inhuman length and eyes of unusual size. This trait was also seen in daughters of the pharaoh, as well as his famous son, King Tutankhamun. But could this family have descended from an extraterrestrial race? Skeptics believe that Akhenaten's skull shape could be the result of skull binding or tying something around the head to misshape it on purpose. But there's absolutely no evidence that supports that Akhenaten's skull shape has anything to do with skull binding. Some claim Akhenaten and his descendants suffered from a biological disorder. But alien theorists insist the explanation lies in something far more shocking. Could Akhenaten, in fact, have been the first recorded attempt at alien-human hybridization? If an alien race were dying, how would they invade another planet to sustain their race, to keep themselves alive through successive generations? One way would be to hybridize with that species, to create a new species, a synthesis of that species and their own, and therefore their civilization could be sustained. If aliens were successful in interbreeding with humans, 
their genes could still be present in the human race today. But where did they come from? And where did they go? The answer may be within messages left behind at their greatest achievement. The Pyramids. Coming up next, the hidden codes of the pyramid reveal incredible evidence of alien architects and expose a shocking secret that could change everything we've ever believed about the 